Hey guys, it's Marketing Monday Live. I'm Liesl and how Marketing Monday Live started was a way for small businesses, entrepreneurs, CEOs, corporates, everyone to connect on a Monday at noon South African time, chatting about problems that we were all facing during lockdown. And it's just progressed from me chatting to you to me having incredible guests joining us since August live on Marketing Monday Live. So uh, you've heard my name's Liesl, nickname is Giraffe, and I don't know if you can see Luke is uh, the rescue dog that's on the couch behind my microphone. So he always makes an appearance along with my other rescue dogs, uh, Leia, and you'll hear them barking because this is going live and you'll hear them jumping into shot. So you all know we've all had those meetings where the kids are running into shot, the dogs are running into shot, husbands running into shot. Um, so this is what it's all about, going live virtually via YouTube and Facebook. And uh, what I like about the Marketing Monday Live is a chance for you to share your tips, things that you've learned during lockdown, things that your challenges that your business has faced and how you've overcome them. And our guests share their knowledge, their wisdom, their struggles, their joys, their celebrations with us live. And today we're chatting to someone in the tourism industry, and it's one of the industries that were really hard hit during lockdown, along with many other industries. But uh, we only saw our borders opening last week in South Africa at the beginning of October. And our guest today, Lee Ann Singer, the sales and marketing director of the Singer Group, joins us on Marketing Monday Live. Welcome, Lee Ann. Nice to have you. Thank you. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Very good. Thank you for having me on your show today. This is very exciting. Well, it is all about just inspiring other people. It's about sharing marketing tips and it's just about uh, just feeling good and, and sharing our ups and our downs and the real moments that we face during lockdown. We always start with a question about a small business that impressed my guests during lockdown. So I want to know from you, is there one or two small businesses that were struggling during lockdown, but they really came to the forefront and, and have done great things. Is there anyone that comes to mind? Uh, yes, I have two two examples. So my one friend owns a pub um, called The Thirsty Turtle. Her name is Miranda van Jarsveld. And obviously pubs, even more so than restaurants, they were very badly hit. So they could only yeah. open up in, in level one. Um, so Miranda is a very, in Afrikaans we say, buy a bequama throw, she, there's nothing that she cannot do. Um, but in lockdown, we've all known that she's an excellent baker and an excellent chef, um, but she started a really, really sexy um, a, a label, home bakery um, during lockdown, and her things are phenomenal. And she actually took the proceeds of this and she was helping to support her team who could not work during the period. So she managed to keep her business open and have quite a good income with her new um, with her new um, baking projects. So that's Marinda van Jarsveld. Her products are amazing. Rather don't buy it because you cannot stop. <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw a post of yours on Instagram a couple of weeks back where you posted one of her rusks and, and the packaging, oh, beautiful yeah. packaging. Yes, amazing packaging, amazing packaging. And the packaging is another example of friends helping friends because her, her branding and packaging was, was done by another friend of ours who on the eve of the original lockdown was about to immigrate and couldn't get on the plane with her family to leave the country. She had packed up her house, everything. So we all pitched in to give her just some camping equipment to at least be able to stay in her house. But her, but oh, this friend, friend helped Marinda with her branding and printing of the labels all in lockdown. So if we don't have each other's backs, we're not going to get anywhere. You know, I think you and I can both say the reason we're sitting here is because of the support systems we have with our girlfriends, right? It's, it's why we're able to run the lives that we do. And then my other business um, is my friend um, Jane and Terry. They started something that I know you'll love called Maven Sustainable Fashion. So it's pre-love oh. clothing. They're celebrating their, um, they're celebrating their launch um, this um, uh, in, a, in a couple of days' time. And um, Maven has done so well. I mean, the, 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 it's incredible how much money they're making in this business. You would not Yay. think that there's this income opportunity in pre-love fashion, but uh, it's, it's doing the right thing for the planet. It's doing um, the, the right thing in, in, in terms of um, ethical fashion. And people mm -hmm. are loving it. And I've, I, I've bought the best stuff from them. I've got a, a little sweater, a 30 Rand jersey that says- I saw. 
that, I mean, it, that, it's incredible. It's incredible. It's like this little little treasure trove of, of fashion that's all of a sudden available and affordable. And we all need to save money because of what happened in lockdown, right? So the, so follow them. It's Maven Sustainable Fashion. So those are my two businesses that I'm punting today. I love it. We're going to share the details down below. So I just want to give everyone a heads up. The picture that we're using and we've used for our promo of having you on our Marketing Monday Live is you in actually in one of the sweaters. It's blue and uh, red and it says dream. Correct. Correct. Love it. Love it. So how do we follow both businesses? You mentioned Maven, but let's just give it again as a recap. Maven Sustainable Fashion on Instagram. And um, Marinda, oh, to be honest with you, I need to, I'll, I'll share the hashtags with you to make sure. We'll post it all down Marinda below so everyone well. can get. Thank and you. And we have seen it. If, if anyone wants to follow you, you've posted all the details on your Instagram account as well. Very much so. For me, for me, um, I always say to people, when you're, when you're purchasing, um, we can make such a difference in people's lives in terms of how we act as consumers. Um, you know, instead of going to, and I don't want to mention any brands, but instead of going to one of the major international chain stores and buying a, a cheap Chinese handbag that was made with, with, you know, cheap labor overseas, you could get an equally good product by buying local, buying from one of our local markets, going onto, onto social media pages and finding local, local designers, local brands, because that money is paying for her child's school fees. It's paying for her daughter's ballet shoes. It's paying for her to keep her people employed. And it's something that I feel very, very strongly about is um, we can make such a difference. You know, we've got massive, massive economic issues in our country. We've got massive um, inequality issues in our country that we cannot rely on government to solve. The only way to solve it is to create the consumer, to, to stimulate consumer power. So spend your money with small businesses um, and let's circulate that rand amongst, I, I prefer women-owned businesses, but let's circulate the rand amongst women-owned businesses uh, because the money is really making a tangible difference in someone's lives. As, a, as an example, um, at one of our hotels, we have a, a pop-up store, a pop-up leather store, um, Luti Leather. And I, I had empty shelves in a beautiful hotel, but my shelves were empty. And I approached her and I said to her, listen, if you can use this space to sell your leather goods, I need nothing from it. Just do some staff training. She actually pays, pays my staff commission, so they're getting extra money. It's in their best interest to sell the products. And she's keeping four women permanently employed with the little pop-up shop. So it's, you, you know, it's so easy to make a difference in people's lives. It really is not hard. Where can people, which hotel is it and where can we pop in to support them? That is the Coliseum Luxury Hotel. And then there are goods available at Dolphin Beach Hotel. Unfortunately, Coliseum is still closed. It's a mm -hmm. COVID casualty at this point. It's very much... a. Uh, uh, in the tourism industry, we have two markets. You've got leisure and then you've got corporate, right? Yeah. Then you have international and you've got domestic. So there are four market segments generally in the South African travel industry. So some of our properties fall in different categories, but that hotel in particular is very much um, domestic corporate. So it's your Joburg businesses traveling. Um, and as you and I are doing now, the rules of engagement have changed. So there's not a lot of demand in terms of um, domestic corporate travel yet. The, yeah. All indicators are that that's going to pick up next year. But for now, it's, you know, it's hard. It's hard to, to th that's our flagship property. That's our most beautiful four-star luxury property. But sometimes you have to make really, really tough decisions and, and have really frank, honest discussions with your, with your employees. And for us, it's the right decision now to keep those doors closed to keep that business closed for now because to run a business as we all know is very very expensive it's very costly mm. especially in our industry you know if you um if you're a four-star if you're a four-star hotel there are certain um services that you need to offer for example 24-hour room service laundry services yes. and all of those things come at a cost so um you know business survives on money in money out um and there's just not enough demand at the moment. But our leisure properties are all open. And I must say, um, yeah, it's, it really is. We're not out of the woods yet, but everybody's feeling optimistic. Um, and I foresee revenge travel. I've coined that phrase. You can use it. What's that? Revenge travel. Revenge travel. What is revenge that? Travel. People, are going to, people are going to think, stuff this. I've had enough. I need to get out. I want to support businesses. I want to make a difference. I want to show COVID that COVID is not my boss. And people are going to travel with a vengeance. They're going to travel more than ever. 
They businesses, conferencing, eventing, that's gonna boom next year. I'm feeling very, very confident about that. People want to take control. People want to take um, take ownership of the crisis that they've been through. So I'm feeling very optimistic about that. I like that revenge travel. We're going to definitely keep an eye out on that. So let's let's talk about the tourism sector. Let's talk about the brands that you represent and the struggles that you guys faced during lockdown. Um, so the the real challenges were that along with a lot of industries i hate to say that my industry was worse hit than yours because nobody has been unaffected nobody has but the the tourism industry um suffered quite quite dramatically and the the reason why the knock-on effects is so heavy in the tourism industry is because we we have a lot of ancillary jobs um for every one um uh, one pure travel and tourism job hospitality job there are five ancillary services if you look at a business like a restaurant for example you know we have our chefs and we have our waiters but then if you look at the supply chain down the line yeah. you have you have the, the the supplies you have the food supplies you have the vegetable suppliers um so if our restaurant is not open that farmer is stuck with his stock where is he going to take his stock to the marketplace if we have a sushi restaurant blowfish restaurant um if we can't serve sushi to our guests we cannot buy the sushi from the suppliers. We cannot buy the mussels from the local suppliers. So where are they selling their stock? Um, they cannot sell stock at the moment. So it is. It really filters down the line. Um, so it's 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 been really really challenging. And what's made it even worse? I, I was actually doing quite well in lockdown. It, surprisingly, mentally and emotionally, I was I was quite in yeah. control. And then one day. The staff, um, our, two of our restaurant managers went into Blowfish. Um, they had to check something in the kitchen. I think they wanted to check the gas or the electricity to make sure everything was switched off. And I'd actually been for a run. And when I ran past, I saw that I saw a lonely figure standing in the restaurant. So I ran in up the stairs and I was perfectly fine. I, you know, I, up until that point, I had not shed a tear. But when I went into that empty restaurant with the, you know, it's like a scene from a movie with a table, with the chairs on top of the tables with a dead quiet. Our restaurant is gonna be 20 years this year. This was the first time that we shut down. After 20 years, I just burst into tears. And these poor, poor guys did not know what to do with me because it was still strict COVID. So there's this girl standing in front of them crying. They're too scared to touch me. They're too scared to hug me. Um, and the tears, that, that, that was quite a, that was real to me. I could see that, you know, it, it was tangible. I could feel it. It was a visceral feeling. Um, and then when you get messages from staff, you know, the, the staff have been incredible. The, you know, no matter how hard you feel you're carrying this burden, to get a message from a staff and be saying that they're praying for the business of survival, I mean, I get all emotional about it. It really is when we we were very lucky because we, we managed to get a quarantine, a very nice quarantine booking in for one of our hotels, which meant we could open the hotel. And we had 10, 10 rooms occupied for three months, which was massive at that stage of the game. Yes. And to get to get a message from the staff, you know, from a couple of the staff members saying, our prayers have been answered. Our prayers have been answered. Our business is still here. That is the most humbling experience. And I've never been in business for the money. If I had, I would have closed everything long ago. Really. <laughs> but it really is about the people, especially in our industry. You know, if you look at the word hospitality, it, it's it's being hospitable. It's make welcoming people into your space, and um, it's it's all about it's all about the people around you. It's it's you know when 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 staff send you messages that they're praying for your business's survival, you know you're not in this alone. And it's not about you. It's not about how much money you owe the banks. It's about the people that you employ, um, and the families that they have to look after. And therefore, you have to make it work. Come hello high water. Um, a lot of people have not been as fortunate. I mean the the the. The casualties in the business, we've all read about it. Big, big, big brands that have closed down that are, you know, we're not sure if they're going to open again. I'm really grateful that we've we've managed it this so far. We haven't had any retrenchments yet. I can't say whether it's going to happen or not happen unless the industry picks up dramatically. But so far, touch wood, um, I, I, I think we're in a fortunate position that we've been in business for almost um, 58 years, the, the organization. So we have got some assets to bolster other businesses, where some young startup businesses did not have that luxury, and unfortunately, you know, their business didn't survive. It's it's a, uh, you know, did we ever think we were going to live in these times? <laughs> I mean, no, 
<laughs> no one ever imagined this. And and this is why we have this Marketing Monday, because we want to hear your story and we want to hear about the, the creative things that you, you guys did. I remember seeing emails of a really creative uh, project coming out of Blowfish restaurants, but that wasn't all. You really came up with some unique and uh, special ideas and initiatives just to get the business going again. Yeah, we had, I must say, we, um, we, you know, when, you, when you're faced with a crisis, that's when you really come up with great ideas, right? When you're doing the usual thing, yeah. you, you tend to think and act in the same way, but it's really those crisis moments that allow you to change and do things differently. And I said to my team, it's a, it's a worn out cliche, but you can't let a good crisis go to waste. We have to, <laughs> right? You um, have to repeat that. You have to repeat yeah. that. You can't let a good crisis go to waste. So yeah, so that was my my mantra. So I've I've made quite a few changes in the business, but we did some we did some really fun stuff. You know, it's it's important for me to have fun. We spend so much time at work that if you don't like the people that you're working with, if you don't enjoy what you do, then it, it must be torturous. You've got to have fun in the process. You've got to stimulate yourself, and you've got to you've you've got to feel that you're serving a purpose and that it's serving your soul. It's feeding you as well. You know, it's a it's a two way street. Um, so what we did during lockdown for Blowfish, as an example, is um, we came up with a recipe book project. So people love our cheesecake, people love our poke bowls, people, you know, we've got huge fans who've been supporting our business for years and years. So overnight, we decided let's write a recipe book. So the chef, um, Chef Neil, he got to work and our general manager, Mark Scheidel, and for these two men, they did a very good job. They, they wrote the recipes. Overnight, literally within, with, I would, I'd like to say about 72 hours, the, the, we, we wrote it, we designed it, and we marketed it. And we raised almost 30,000 rand um, of the sales wow. of our recipe book, yes. Um, and we had, we, we had supporters, you know, our, our restaurant is very popular with kite surfers mm -hmm. and tourists. Yes. And we had support from around the world where people were, um, you know, it was so exciting seeing this PayPal account, the money coming in. And all that money went straight to a staff um, support fund. So all the proceeds, 100% of that recipe book um, went to, to a staff fund just to be able to keep them alive and keep them fed. Because, you, as you know, tours took a long time to pay. There were issues with some of the yeah. foreigners in terms of claiming tours. And then we thought, let's do something fun. So we had a, um, a secret admirer campaign where you could send... I remember some, that. Yes, where you could send somebody um, roses. They were salmon roses. Um, so you could buy um, buy salmon roses for someone and we sent them a little anonymous message with whatever message you wanted to say that somebody who likes you um, bought you bought you roses. And then they had to come into Blowfish to to collect their, their, um, their roses. So it was a great way for us to get people into the store. And you know how how inquisitive we all are. If we know, oh, who has sent me this? And they could only find out who it was when they came into the restaurant. So everybody came in because if I had sent you flowers and you're thinking, who sent this to me? They they had to come in to find out who sent it. So that was a another exciting campaign that we did. And then in terms of real commercials, we, um, you know, we have all these empty hotel rooms. Mm. And one of the singer groups, um, USPs, is our hotel rooms are really quite big, right? Our average hotel room is, is 40 square meters, which is the size of, a, wow. of an apartment today. A, yes. a small apartment, yeah. I mean, most hotel rooms are today that are built are between 14 and 20 square meters. So mm -hmm. um, they're quite big. So we, we turned them into long-term rentals, um, which made a massive, massive difference. And we just decided, you know what, I found that a lot of friends were relocating. They couldn't move during lockdown. Um, couples, you know, it's, 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 it's the sad reality, couples splitting up, people who needed to quarantine. Yep. So we, we took our, our hotel rooms and we converted them into long-term rentals, apartments. And it was very simple. We did really, really well. You didn't have to pay a deposit. You, we know what the shape is. How do you come up with a deposit? You know, That's and the big thing. We had no credit checks, no contracts, no deposits. It was literally move in, move out, and people loved it. You know, there was no questions asked. And I must say, that, that's what's kept the business alive, was the fact that we, we pivot, uh, pivot, you know, the new word, pivot. We pivoted yeah. into, into long-term rentals for, our, for some of our hotels. And now we're struggling to kick the guests out because season is coming. <laughs> they tell everybody that they're staying in a hotel. They're not staying in an apartment. They're staying in a hotel. So, in a so hotel. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. 
Those are incredible stories. And, and it's just amazing how you've kept the staff morale up. You, you've managed to come up with these really creative and ingenious ideas. And it's just made such a difference for the business. Well done, really. That is just incredible. It hasn't. It hasn't always been been easy. I mean, I'm I'm a very positive person, but I have to be honest. It hasn't always been easy because when you look at a relationship between um between an employer and an employee, the 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 basis of our relationship is you deliver a service and I pay you for that service, right? So no matter how much we like each other, that is that is the negotiation and the agreement that we entered into. So when you're in a position where you're not paying your staff because you can't because there's no income. It takes a lot of fancy footwork. It takes a lot of negotiation. It takes really, really tough, hard, gut-wrenching discussions to say, well, I need you. I need your time. I need your commitment, but I can't pay you for it. Are you in or are you out? And I had a very frank discussion with everybody. I said, I'm not going to be able to pay you for months, right? You, I've, we've always been transparent. You, the, you, know, you know what the business needs to survive. Now there's no income, right? Are you, are you, can you help? Can you help keep the business afloat? Because we have to work harder than ever to keep our businesses open. Although we can't take bookings, we have to, um, we have to do these long-term rentals. We have to do our deliveries at Blowfish when we were allowed to do deliveries. So it was, it took a lot of negotiation and my leadership skills were tested to the max in terms of very frank, very hard discussions. And, you know, and as human nature, some, sometimes some people were, yes, I'm in. And then when they, when their debit orders bounce, or they've lost their car insurance because they don't have an income, you know, for, for a staff member to remain committed when they're giving me their time and I can't pay them for it, and they're also losing. Their lifestyle has changed. They've had to make major sacrifices. Um, it, 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 it's, 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 it, it wasn't, wasn't easy, but I'd like to say that, you know, all of our staff members, they, you know, they, they've put in in the game because I think that in the past I've proven that when things are up, we all benefit. Right. And by the same token, I said to him, now that things are down, um, this is when your true color shows. So either you're in or you're out. One staff member resigned during lockdown. Um, because she got a really, really good job. She was always wanted to move to a small door. And I said to her, go, I'm going to miss you. You're amazing. But if somebody can pay you, I'm never, ever going to hold it against you. So when, so it's, you know, it's, it's so far, it's, um, that, that was really hard, it, especially, as I say, if you go to the fundamentals of what a relationship, uh, an employee employer relationship is, um, but yes, so we so we're busy we're busy working on the industries opened. It hasn't gone back from zero to zero. We've got a long way to catch up, and a lot of the markets are still closed. Um, only certain countries are allowed in the yeah. in South Africa. So we, we're I mean the just to give you an example, the occupancy in the hotel industry in Cape Town in July was four percent, four percent. Yeah. Wow. Yes. We usually this time of the year we'd probably be sitting on sixty eight percent across mm. the industry in Cape Town. We were sitting on four percent. Now that's why some of the big brand names have, have have closed hotels. They've closed hotels that'll never open again because you, it's just not sustainable. But that's behind us now. Let's hope that that it's only up from here in 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 the tourism and industry. Now, for international viewers that are watching, just give a breakdown of where you guys are situated because we have a lot of viewers from all over the world watching Marketing Monday Live. And a lot of them aren't South Africans. They, they're not familiar with Cape Town. So break down your, your, your hotels, your restaurants for us just to, to showcase what you have on offer. Thank you. So this is my marketing opportunity, right? You've given me the platform, so here it is. <laughs> Um, so we've got we've got seven seven hotel properties um, across different markets, right? So we've got um, a lower end all the way through to the upper end. Um, in the city centre, um, everybody knows the Gardens Shopping Centre. On top of the Gardens Shopping Centre, um, we have holiday apartments. They are self catering apartments, no mess, no fuss. Um, Budget accommodation, very popular with film crews. In fact, um, I don't think I can say it here, but we've got a very exciting Netflix crew in the house at the moment. Ooh, who are give us a sneak peek. What does it start with? <laughs> uh, blood and water. Blood and water. There is there. Yes. Um, then we um, 
it's it's very very popular with backpackers with students it's on the my city bus route so we have a lot of uct students who stay with us it's it's a very affordable accommodation um so for international backpackers tourists on a budget that's the spot to be right it's and it's it's in the vibe garden center you've got the Woolworths downstairs you've got the pick and pay all the delis it's such a nice vibe in the center so um that's garden center holiday apartments in Century City, we have our beautiful luxury Coliseum Hotel that's unfortunately still closed at the moment. Um, um, but when once it opens, I'll let you guys know. And it's 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 a much love. You know, Century City is such a great destination, and international tourists don't really know about it. Um, they know of the Atlantic Seaboard, they know about the city, yeah. they know the waterfront. Century City is is it's probably quicker for you to drive from cities from from Century City to the waterfront than what it is from Sea Point to the waterfront, right? Because you're on the M1 That's highway. True. Yes, you're on the M1 highway. You're straight into the waterfront. In Century City, we have two hotels: Coliseum, as I mentioned, and Island Club Hotel and Apartments. Island Club is really really well situated. You know the bridges at the back of Canal Walk. When you cross those bridges, yes. you walk straight into the hotel. Um, and you've got Intaka Island. Island Club has various swimming pools. It's got indoor pools and outdoor pools. So it's a it's a it's a beautiful, lush, relaxed vibe. Um, and then very famous um, landmark property is Dolphin Beach Hotel in Bloberg. Everybody mm -hmm. knows the big complex. Um, what people don't know is that the hotel is a is a portion, and then the rest of the complex is residential apartments. That has a real resort type feel. You've got lush, lush, lush gardens. You walk directly onto the beach. It's um, you can walk out of your beachfront cabana over the grass onto the beach. And we are very popular with kite surfers and European tourists who travel with their families, digital nomads, because our apartments that those are real residential sized apartments. They're one and two bedroom apartments. Um, so for 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 kite surfers, for example, we've got storage um, space for them to lock up their gear. Um, they oh, sit great. up. With kite on in front of their units and they walk onto the beach and they're on the water um that little parking lot next to next to dolphin beach and blowfish restaurants i mean that's my best marketing spot i don't need to go anywhere else to do marketing <laughs> my, yeah. my, my team always tease me because i always didn't do my makeup in the car and i say listen there's the added benefits of the the guys in the wetsuits you know while i'm doing my makeup there's no point in in you know not not using the views that are available there's the table mountain view and then there's the kite surface view um so, <laughs> so on the on the same premises as blowfish restaurant um our playlist line is sushi seafood sunset which really is what blowfish is about i mean there are no better views um yeah. around um and we have, we've got, if I can take the opportunity, we've got such great specials at Blowfish. And and just if I can just, I need to thank our, our local supporters. Lisa, you'll not believe it, but we have had record turnover at Blowfish this month. We have smashed last year's targets um, at Blowfish this month. And that is because people want to do good. People want to, nobody wants to see a business fail. Um, it, it, everybody, you know, people want to see people succeed. And our local customers have come back with revenge eating. They have come back and they are they are supporting us better than better than ever. It's incredible. So I want to take this opportunity to thank our clients. They really have carried us through. Um, so on a Monday night at Blowfish, we have a 99 rand seafood platter that's been running for about five years. And it is booked out every single Monday night. You must try it. I'm not just saying this. I mean, if you go into our Instagram accounts, you'll see it is the best value for money. You've got mussels, you've got prawns, you've got fish, um, you've got calamari for 99 Rand a seafood platter. And then- and and we God, that's, that's a great price. We know what seafood costs in Cape Town. Yeah. I mean, that, that's less than $10 for yes. a seafood um, platter. You can't get that anywhere in the world. No, 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 no. Um, and then we have half price sushi on Sundays and Wednesdays, which is probably Captain's longest um, standing sushi specials. So, so Sundays, um, Mondays and Wednesdays, we're packed and you have to book at Blowfish. And then a very, very sexy new little special that we have, uh, which is the most Instagrammable special, um, two glasses of bubbles with six oysters and um, we have we have sold so many oysters. I mean, I, I think we're keeping the the local oyster industry alive. We, <laughs> we sold about about eight hundred oysters last week because we've got all the beautiful girls coming in with their girlfriends. Wow. The entire meal is just oysters and 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 bubbles. So that's a, a very cool summer special. Um, 
So we, so, so I must say, Blowfish, we, and we're a very popular wedding destination. So we actually booked up for the rest of the year for Saturdays for wedding, believe it or not. So all the That's couples, yeah, you know, people either proposed in lockdown or got divorced in lockdown. Um, but we've, we've, we've got weddings virtually every Saturday except one Saturday. Um, so if you want to get married on a weekday, we've got great wedding specials because everybody wants the weekends. We're actually running a midweek wedding special you know if you want to save money you want to go to a better honeymoon that that's 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 my advice don't splash on your wedding splash on your on your honeymoon um and then um we've got a much loved business in Ca not in cape town but montague springs and whenever i do presentations i always say there are two types of people in cape town those that have been to montague springs and those that want to go to montague springs i in fact um was there on sunday night with my family um, and um, uh, it is just, you know, it's heaven on earth. I mean, I forgot the tranquility. We've got hot, hot swimming pools, hot springs set amongst on the one side. You've got this beautiful mountain. On the other end, you've got a vineyard with a river running through it. And um, Montague Springs is such a light rite, a, a, a rite of passage for a lot of Cape Canadians. You know, it's the easiest market to sell to. They, they say that we either have... Um, that they either got married there or they spent their school holidays there, they proposed there, they got engaged oh. there, they take their baby's christenings, everything happens there. So it's it's such a lovely story to tell. We all know Eddie Cassar, right? The the family. Yeah, well, well, explain to people who don't know Eddie because we're a Cape Tonian, we all know who Eddie is. Okay. But for yeah. international viewers, give a little okay. background of Eddie. Okay. So Eddie Cassar is like a well known PR um master in Cape Town. He handled very big brands like the like the Met. Um, yes. his big project is the is the um, the comedy festival. And what That's what right. what Eddie does is he he takes road trips to go and find young emerging talent. And um I'll, I'll never forget he once said to me that um he was he was in a local community somewhere and two of the comedians actually used Montague Springs in their in their um in their repertoire because it is just such a well-known brand so that's marketing you can't pay for is when people are selling selling on your behalf um so montague montague springs is two hours drive from cape town um mm -hmm. it's on the m1 just past um ashton and it really is a is a lovely resort so for families and non-families um we're always full school holidays we're always full on weekends but midweek we've got really great specials so if you aren't tied down to school holidays or you aren't stuck with um with children who have to go to school go midweek great specials that always run midweek i've got the, the airlines are open i hope they don't bother you, but i can hear the airlines are flying overhead <laughs> we we celebrate the airlines i have to tell you i'm in montague in uh, two weeks time for a race called the cape classic that actually leads from montague oh, it's hosted cool. by west grow and they want to put Montague on the map in terms of cycling and cycling all around there. So for yeah. any of uh, the international viewers that are watching, anyone locally watching, great race and a great little town and great mm. food. Um, mm. And we always cycle past Montague Springs. So now I've got a good reason to, oh, to stop in and stay over. So thank yes, you for, for sharing that. Yes, thank you. Um, and then so there's one more property. So, yes. Sorry, there's one more. Well, there's a couple of more businesses. We've got 11 brands. In Mention it. But, um, we um in Mossel Bay, we um there's a campsite called the Baca Santos. So there's chalets on the one side and campsite on the other, and it's such a lovely story. Um, I grew up as a child camping in this campsite, right? So so that's that's the only recollection I have of December holidays was camping at at um, the Baca Santos. And um, five years ago, um, we saw that the municipality put the property up for tender. We applied and we were the successful bidders. So for me, it's the most amazing yeah. full circle where I grew up camping and now we manage it. And it's, I keep telling my children, it's a its a long contract. It's a 30 year contract. And I tell my children, you better watch what we're doing because <laughs> you're gonna have to <laughs> take, take this over one day. And now I camp there with, with my own children every December. And it's so much fun because we're all the families next door and we were there as kids, um, the naughty teenagers, you know what we do when we're teenagers. And now we all have kids who are going through the exact same cycle. It's beautiful. It's really lovely. And then um, we also have two travel brands I'll quickly mention to you. Um, we have a, a brand called Embassy Travel, which is um, Cape Town's oldest travel agency. And that 
business specializes in corporate travel. So those are um, government departments, big corporates who need to really manage their travel spend, who often have a, have a large volume of their staff moving around, keeping track of where everybody is, reporting um, bulk buying powers. So Embassy Travel is, is our corporate travel agency. And then we have an online travel agency which is focused on the leisure market called Amazing Holidays. And I actually, just prior to this, Lisa, I came from an Amazing Holidays meeting. And just to let you know, we have got some crazy specials coming out soon. Yay. Um, and exclusives where we've managed to negotiate exclusive deals at some um, international resorts. So we've got an exciting Bali deal coming up for next year and um, some Maldives holidays at some very luxury resorts at really good prices. So that's amazing holidays. Keep an eye open for that. It's, it's, um, that, that business is a business that flourished. I wouldn't say it flourished during lockdown, but there we did a whole rebrand, a whole new make. I bought a partner on board. So I have a woman, a woman partner in our travel business who's very experienced in the travel industry, Zephni, who's joined our business. So yeah, so that's the, um, those are the businesses. Wow, and you've managed to mention all of them. You've managed to, to be on top of all of them during lockdown. If people want to find out more, where can they go to on any of the businesses? Do you have a main website that links everything or a main mm -hmm. uh, social media account? We do have we do have a main website, and that's um, our business is called The Singer Group. My surname is Singer. Um, so it's The Singer Group. You, you can imagine um, when I get to a function and then, you know, you when you arrive at a function, you've got the list of names and then say, what's your name? And then I say, Leanne Singer, all they hear is singer. And then they say, oh, no, you have to go into the back entrance. And then I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not that type of singer, no. So um, it's the singergroup.co.za. And then each of the brands um, have their own independent website and each of the brands have, have social media pages. So social media is the best way to to get the breaking news and, and you know, in, um, up to date information on social media. What will, we'll post all the contact details down below. Before we go, advice to small businesses. What is one of the go to apps as a small business you should have and you should be running? It could be a social media app, it can be a business related app, an expense app. What is one of the go to apps that you think is vital for any business uh, in their day to day running? For me, um, and my needs are different to other people's needs. Because we, we at the moment, we're working remotely, because we have 11 active brands that we work on, I use Asana. It's A-S-A-N-A. -A. And Asana is a project management tool. So it's free if you're less than 15 users, which is great. And it really allows you to streamline your workflow. It allows you to assign tasks. You can upload documents. Um, it really is a, a, it, it's a CRM package. And, no, no, sorry, not a CRM package. It's a project management tool. Um, yeah. All our brands are there. All our documents are stored there. And I assign tasks and I assign timelines. So for me to manage my team when we're not in the same space, um, everybody's all over the place, especially with our brands being in different locations. Um, Asana is my go-to. It's it's it is really the the it was life changing when we brought that on. We're trying to move off email completely. Um, you know, it's emails I, I find really really hard to manage. Um, it steals my time. It takes a lot of you know people are so polite, but it's um thank you no thank you it's a pleasure it's a pleasure you know you are just like where do you stop? Um, and the volume of of emails is crazy for me. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so Asana is the tool for me. And then in our industry, a very, very important tool in the um, hospitality industry is a tool called Guest Review, um, which is the second largest um, review tool um, in the world. And it is a South African business started in Port Elizabeth. Yay! Yay, yeah, let's support it. I love the story. It's called Guest Review. And what happens is if you check into the hotel, when you check out tomorrow, you're going to receive an automatic questionnaire that I can write the content for so I can tailor it to my business. And then you'll score me and then I will get that feedback. Um, the reason why my inbox is overflowing is because I get every property's reports, but that's my way of wow. knowing what happens at the property. Um, so guest review, it's a local business. At the moment, it's the second largest and most popular um, review app in the world. Um, so it's guest and then review, R-E-V-U. They're based in Port Elizabeth. Um, and that really is life-changing. The, the data on the back end, it can show me that there's a trend in, there's a housekeeping issue or there's a food and beverage issue. Um, 
And the other benefit is it plugs in from, from a whole lot of other platforms. So my Google reviews, my TripAdvisor reviews, my Expedia reviews, all of those reviews are in one central source. So I can manage all my guest reviews on one platform. So in our industry, that's extremely useful. Well, Leanne, you've shared some incredible tips with us. You shared your highs, your lows with us, and we, we're glad that we got a chance to celebrate some of the great specials, some of the great offers at your 11 properties or your 11 uh, different businesses. We're looking forward to, to hearing more about it. All the contact details we will post down below. If people want to follow you or want to ask you anything uh, further that we may not have covered on our Marketing Monday Live, how can people get hold of you? Um, so, so I love hearing from people and I love helping people, right? Networking to me is the, is the most important thing. Um, I always say to people, if you hand out a business card, that means nothing. You have to follow up. Or if you get a business card, mm -hmm. right? That business card is a piece of paper. It means nothing. There has to be action behind it. So I welcome people to contact me. I've, um, not to blow my own horn, but, um, I've, I've, I won a very prestigious award during lockdown called the, um, Gender Mainstreaming Awards for Positive Yes, congratulations. We were going to chat about it. Thank you for mentioning <laughs> it. I'm so glad you got around to it. Um, thank you. It, which was a huge accolade. And the reason I'm mentioning it is I think the reason why I won was because um, I have connected so many people. And it really is, it takes no effort whatsoever. So, um, you know, I meet somebody who in Joburg, in the property industry, who is running um, pop-up cinemas right and she doesn't know anybody in Cape Town I introduced her to um to people that I know at the city of Cape Town and um she managed to get contracts to run pop-up cinemas that did nothing for it took nothing from me it really was just an introductory email um so the so I welcome people to contact me because I love helping people it's it's um, I'm I'm Afrikaans and I'm Jewish I'm a Buddha Yuit there's not lots of us around <laughs> I have, I have both those traits of being um, of service to people. I have a double whammy of that. So I, I, I welcome people to contact me. If I can help in any way, I, I certainly will. I, that, that, that's, that's why I'm in this. Um, the, the, the rest, is, the rest is, is, is easy. This is the stuff that really makes a difference in people's lives. So my, you can contact me on Instagram. Um, it's Leanne Singer. So it's Leanne, I-E at the end, Leanne Singer. Or um, a general email is info at singergroup.co.za. And I'll try my best to, to, to help anybody. Yes, I welcome that. that that's amazing. And uh, I hope that uh, people do reach out to you and do ask questions. And it's really been incredible chatting to you. Thank you so much for your time and sharing some tips, sharing advice with us here on Marketing Monday Live. And at any time, if you're running any specials or you've got anything happening, please feel free to pop back in. We'd love to chat to you again because I know there's going to be so many more questions regarding business advice, marketing tips and updates. So thank you so much, Leanne. Thank you for the thank you for the opportunity and um, kudos to you for for I mean you did this yourself during lockdown you pivoted and and created a platform for for businesses so I'm I'm very grateful because we don't always know how to how to do peer to peer reach so this is this is very valuable I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Leanne, and all the best, and uh, we look forward to chatting to you again soon. Thank you. That was Leanne, Leanne Singer from the Singer Group joining us on Marketing Monday Live. Her contact details are down below. All the, the, the properties she spoke about, all the tips, all the advice, all the websites and the links that she mentioned is down below. Uh, so feel free to make contact. Feel free to follow them on Instagram. And feel free to reach out to me and let me know if there's perhaps a guest, someone in your community that's doing great things that you'd love me to host on Marketing Monday Live. It can be anyone that's really doing great things that have got tips, advice, and uh, uh, entrepreneurial experience to chat and share with the, with you. So I'd love to hear from you. Please feel free to mail me creative at the giraffebrand.com. And I'll catch you again next Marketing Monday Live at noon South African time. Have yourself a great Monday. Cheers.